Good evening. I'm Jonathan Salant, the uh, Washington correspondent for New Jersey Advanced Media. I'm here with Steve Adubato, who just finished a hour-long interview with New Jersey's two senators, Cory Booker and Bob Menendez. And Steve, nice job. Well, the, thank you so much. Appreciate it, John. The, uh, the thing I want to tell you first is Cory Booker had talked about the incident in the Congress where President Obama was heckled. And the congressman who did that was a guy by the name of Joe Wilson from South Carolina. And he yelled, you lie, when Obama delivered his speech on health care before a joint session of Congress in September 2009. And in the week after Wilson yelled, you lie, he raised $1.3 million for his campaign. I know because I wrote the story. And Wilson's Democratic opponent raised $1.5 million off the same comment. So anyway, the first question, Steve, was, you know, your impression. I mean, what, anything surprise you that you heard tonight? Well, Jonathan, first, uh, I want to thank everyone on NJ.com uh, joining us and thank everyone who just watched us on the PBS stations, uh, WNET and NJTV, and everyone who watched streaming online on NJ.com. But I have to say this. Cory Booker is a gentleman. Cory Booker, when I asked, you know, who was it who said it, he didn't say Wilson's name, if you noticed that. He wouldn't give it up, even though it's obvious who it was. I probably should have said it as a journalist, but uh, what's interesting is that he did say that that particular member of Congress raised a lot of money. What he didn't say was that the Democrats raised a lot of money as well. And the whole point is that Barack Obama, President Obama, is a lightning rod and has been a lightning rod. And in many ways, uh, Senator Menendez and Senator Booker had to deal with that during this one hour program. They had to deal with, uh, when we talked about Obamacare, the Affordable Care Act, when we talked about ISIS, when we talked about um, Ferguson and uh, the response of the federal government in police minority relations cases, a lot of it has to do with the White House's reaction to things and how these senators agree or disagree with the president. And even though I personally, as a journalist, believe that they disagree more than they were willing to say tonight, they held the line with the Obama administration pretty much by and large. I remember the uh, President Obama had the, the Beer Summit uh, early in his campaign. I mean, you need another summit like that to try to, I guess, smooth relations, even race relations. Well, you know, the whole idea of the Beer Summit, if you remember the line that um, President Obama had at the, uh, because you're down in Washington, the Correspondents' Dinner, Remember he said the line where he said, uh, they said, people say that you should get along with Mitch, Mitch McConnell. Why don't you have a drink, President Obama, with uh, Mitch McConnell? Remember what he said? Why don't you have a drink with Mitch McConnell? And I know it was a funny line at the correspondence dinner. The problem is, I don't think Mitch McConnell thought it was funny. And so ultimately, after the election, he's, he was thinking, well, maybe I should have a drink with Mitch McConnell. My sense is that Senator Menendez and Senator Booker clearly know, while they get along as two Democrats in New Jersey, the level of rancor, the level of partisan division in Washington, and you see it every day, Jonathan, as a journalist down there, is worse than ever. And even though they're saying no big... Well, they talked about being, up, you know, they can get along. They were in the minority. And... I don't... Uh, they, uh, listen, I think it's going to be nasty after January. Well, they you know, talk about being well, you know, getting along well together, and we know even Democrats, even senators of the same party, often can be at odds with each other. Uh, Torricelli and Lautenberg come to mind as two people who probably weren't the most favored. Favorite. In fact, when Torricelli didn't run for re-election, Lautenberg was drafted back into running. Uh, but these guys seem to have a, a good relationship together, and we'll... Uh, but even in the minority, the question, and you asked that question, you know, what can they accomplish? Yeah, they can get small stuff done, but can they really get the big stuff done? Will they really be able to shape uh, taxes and spending and the federal budget going forward? You know, I will say that a lot of times politicians um, are really good at trying to appear as if they get along and they're friendly and, and all that because it's the right thing to appear to do in public. Bob Menendez and Cory Booker, when you sit across from them just a few feet and you sense the body language and the interaction, they genuinely like each other. You could tell. And Cory Booker looks to Senator Menendez for advice, for guidance, because he just got to Washington. And Senator Menendez is such a senior member as the outgoing chair of the Senate Foreign Relations Committee. 
they genuinely like each other. Now, moving to your other question, Jonathan, about how much they can get accomplished, I think they know that being in the minority with Republicans taking control, it's going to be very tough to get anything done. And they know that they're going to be largely making speeches after January in the minority. And uh, they can only hope they're going to have a voice, but I don't believe that they believe they're going to do that. The Republicans have been waiting a long time to take control, and I think they're going to have to uh, be opposing the best they can, and we're going to have more gridlock, and I think both senators know it. Well, what happens with the both senators, you know, they'll be able to get the small bore stuff done. They'll be able to get the funding for Hurricane Sandy. They'll be able to get money for local projects. Again, the question that will say, how much are they going to influence uh, federal government, the big issues? Uh, how much clout will Senator Menendez have on foreign relations? As chairman, if he wanted more Iran sanctions, even if President Obama didn't want it, it was a big deal. He had the power to really advocate that. As a minority member, is he going to? You're exactly right. And, and even though I appreciate you saying that there are smaller issues, and I uh, but again, I believe what we're really talking about is New Jersey-centric issues. And I don't believe a lot of people are going to fight that Sandy aid that Senator Menendez and Senator Booker are going to fight for. But going to your point, I believe you're absolutely right, Jonathan, when it comes to issues having to do with Iran and those sanctions, Senator Menendez talking about those sanctions as the chair of the Senate Foreign Relations Committee is one thing. Talking about those sanctions as the ranking Democratic member on the Foreign Relations Committee in the minority, totally different. Further, when we talked about raising the minimum wage that both of them said absolutely has to be done, try to do that when you're in the minority. You and I both know there's virtually no chance of that happening with the Democrats in minority in the Senate and in the lower house. Not going to happen even though they believe it's the right thing to do. Republicans will never let it happen. But the thing with Senator Menendez, when he came out originally with the Iran sanctions bill and President Obama said, wait a second, give us more time for negotiations. It was a big deal that a committee chairman from the same political party as the president was challenging the president. And I know a lot of the pro-Israel groups, a lot of groups like that, were lobbying Bob Menendez and pushing for Iran sanctions. And Menendez had a power to deliver and put the bill on the floor, but also the fact that a committee chairman is standing up to the president of the same party is a much bigger deal than it will be now when a Republican chairman stands up to the president of the other party. You know, uh, Bob Menendez has had a history of being incredibly independent, and I'm sure the Obama administration and a whole variety of circumstances have been less than pleased with some of the things that he said. But I will say in the program, in the one-hour program we just finished on public broadcasting, he did not deviate. What he said was, you know, there are times that we in the Senate on the Democratic side will go beyond when it comes to international issues where the president or the White House wants to be. And you saw this, Jonathan. And he said, well, the president can use it as a negotiating tool. He can say, well, look at my Congress. The Congress wants to go really far. Oh, we're not going to go that far. And we can use that as a negotiating tool by saying we in the White House will pull back. And it was almost as if Menendez was saying that he's working in concert with the administration, Obama administration, and they're going to somehow collaborate. I actually think he genuinely disagrees with the Obama administration, but he was doing a really good job of saying they're working in tandem, but again, he's a diplomat and knew exactly what to say. <coughs> Excuse me. Well, let me do one thing on, on foreign affairs. Uh, oh, ISIS, where we, we, we saw the Islamic State, Bob Menendez saying, the Islamic State does not have the capabilities to hit the United States like the Al-Qaeda did September 11, 2001, and our job is to make sure that they don't do it and don't get that capability, but I don't want to send American troops to do it at this point. Let's see if the plan works with the people, the boots on the ground being supplied by the countries, the residents of the countries who are actually the Islamic State is fighting as we speak. You know, if the Republicans want more aggressive action, does Bob Menendez try to block it, and can he, or does he go along with it? You know, this becomes really tricky, and I will also say that on NJ.com, a lot of questions came in about ISIS, how to deal with ISIS. And the whole idea, when I asked this question about getting tough and boots on the ground, it's so interesting. We use those expressions, getting tough, boots on the ground. The reality is anyone who says that they really understand how to deal with this incredibly complex and difficult 
situation with ISIS, well, they are in control of having Americans as hostages that they can parade out in public and horrifically behead them. I mean, they're kidding themselves. And I think Menendez, Senator Menendez, you know, I, I think he's struggling with this as any reasonable United States senator or policymaker or the president who wants to be tough, who wants to go there and kick butt and find where they are and do what has to be done. But the problem is when they're holding Americans, journalists or others, and they're in control and can publicly do what they've been doing, it's so easy to talk that way. It's much harder to act because we're afraid of what the reaction is going to be. But we also know not acting is not an option either. One of the things we talk again talking about the minority is we heard uh, in one of your questions both Senator Menendez and Senator Booker talking about inequality, raising the minimum wage. Senator Booker talked about raising the tax on carried interest, which is what Warren Buffett says when he says my secretary makes more, pays a higher tax rate than I do. When you're managing funds, certain asset funds, you get taxed at a capital gains rate, even though you're managing and should be and it's and some people say that should be taxed as a salary. It's not a, you're not investing your own money. You're managing other people's money. On a Republican co conference, I mean, the Senate Republicans filibustered the bill when they were in the minority. They filibustered minimum wage increase when they were in the minority. Right. I mean, Booker and Menendez are they really going to see any progress on that going forward in the next Congress? See, here's the thing. I want to be optimistic. I want to be positive. I kept asking them about bipartisan cooperation. Senator Booker and Senator Menendez, to their credit, kept giving example after example of what they were calling bipartisan cooperation. We cooperated on an initiative regarding veterans. We did this regarding post-Sandy recovery. That's great. But what you just talked about, Jonathan, well, no Republicans in the minority blocked the minimum wage, when they blocked the initiative that you just talked about that Warren Buffett was saying that my secretary pays more in taxes than I do because of not a loophole, but the way the law is written. If the Republicans did that in the minority, then what would they do when they get into the majority? And the fact is, if that is not gridlock, then what is gridlock? So I appreciate Senator Booker and Senator Menendez saying, that we in the media, because both of them have accused me and you and everyone in the media of making too much of the gridlock and that we love the conflict, but you just what you just described isn't what we created, Jonathan. It's what the Democrats and Republicans can't get done together. That's gridlock. We didn't call it that. That's just what it is. The uh, one thing I noticed at the beginning of the co the uh, interview, you talked to both senators about the uh, Ferguson and about the Staten Island uh, person who was uh, who was killed by a police officer and it goes back to we talked about con the uh, discussion on race and I know I think Senator Booker said yeah I want to have money more uh, body cameras for police officers is that something that you think that the Senate even in Republican hands are going to be discussing coming up about the uh, the thing with the uh, ab about how these folks are that seeing black men dying, unarmed black men being died at the hands of police officers. Well, you have to realize that this interview took place literally, I don't know, 24, 48 hours after the Eric Garner decision on Staten Island, the no um, indictment situation. And I believe that the interview, the conversation, and the reaction to it on the part of many people who saw it um, is really a reaction to that because that videotape from Staten Island of those police officers and Eric Gardner on the ground 11 times saying I can't breathe people will decide for themselves but the point here is this that was videotaped and that's what I said to both senators let's talk about body cameras on police officers and how much value it would have because we just saw on camera what we just saw with Eric Garner and there was a no indictment verdict in Staten Island and both of them said yeah that's right we got to see it and therefore when the federal government through the Department of Justice steps in and therefore if they come in and they again from a civil rights perspective bring such a case and they say they pursue it and 
a verdict comes in against the cops or a particular cop in Staten Island, they will argue that is a product of that videotape, and they're arguing you need those cameras to do that. I don't believe, frankly, that the Republicans in Congress want that. I do believe most Americans believe it's the right thing, and frankly, a lot of the cops I talk to, Jonathan, think it's probably the right thing as well, and the Eric Garner video, more than anything else, is moving public opinion on this. Well, Steve, it looks like we're running out of time, so I want to thank you very much for your appearance. I want to thank you for the, the interview. It was very enlightening, and I'm glad we were able to talk to uh, both senators, and we can hear them on the record, what they plan to do coming up, and what their thoughts are on the major issues. Thanks again. Jonathan, thank you, and everyone on NJ.com watching us. Thank you.